Over the past few weeks, I've been pretty obsessed with vivarium making. Together, we've created some pretty gorgeous setups, and each one pushes my terrarium building skills a little bit harder. This week, I'm set to try something I've never truly done before. And in my mind, I knew it was going to be hard, but I would soon realize just how hard it would be. AC family, in today's video, fellow nature lover and my favorite terrarium maker on YouTube, Tanner from the channel Serper Design and I engage in the ultimate terrarium making challenge and his challenge for me to create a terrarium in a bottle. And so I had a cool plan and accepted the challenge to make the ultimate terrarium in a bottle, which would also house a colony of ants. Keep on watching until the very end to see how I created the ultimate ant terrarium in a bottle, as well as a special announcement that you guys might like to be a part of once done. Welcome to the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. One of my favorite things to do during the day is step into my ant room and gaze for hours into the various big, small, multi-species and simple homes to our ants and other animals. Building terrariums is something I've been doing since I was just a little kid. And I love surfing YouTube for terrarium related videos. That was how I came to meet a friend whose terrarium videos are just exceptional. AC family, meet Tanner from the channel Serpa Design. He's made some really awesome terrariums and paludariums which house aquatic and terrestrial creatures. He makes some of the most gorgeous builds on the platform, in my opinion. So a few weeks ago, Serpa Design and I decided that we'd have a cool holidays collab of sorts. We decided we'd embark on the ultimate terrarium making challenge. The rules were simple. We challenge each other to design a terrarium with parameters of our choice. And so, here was Serpa Design's terrarium challenge for me. What's up AC family? Tanner of Serpa Design here and my challenge for Ants Canada is to make a terrarium in a bottle with a small opening. This might seem like an easy task if you're used to my builds. However, keep in mind that I have a toolbox full of utensils which help me work in less than ideal conditions. Plus, I've yet to see Ants Canada make anything on this small of a scale or in a container like this. All things considered, I think this could be a real challenge. I'm excited to see how he works through the build and how inventive he can be. Best of luck. Thanks, Serpa Design. Interesting choice. At first in my mind, I felt the challenge was fairly easy. I mean, how hard could sticking a few things into a bottle really be? In fact, I figured I'd also up the challenge and make my terrarium in a bottle suitable for an ant colony to live in it as well. Little did I know, I was up for one of the hardest terrarium builds of my life. Let's get started. Presenting to you, the glass bottle. It was the only glass bottle I could find in my area that would make a suitable terrarium, whose dimensions were pre-approved by Serpa Design. It was a sleek bottle with nice curves and a beautiful wooden base. I envisioned a lush terrascape inside it with some ants frolicking around. My work now was to make the ant terrarium I saw in my mind come to life in this bottle. I realized the most obvious challenge was this bottle opening, which could barely fit my hand in. I knew this challenge would take some improvisation and some tool use. Now here were the other components I'd be needing for this ant terrarium in a bottle build. This coarse gravel for drainage, activated carbon, cocoa fiber, some soil. This is an organic potting mix, lava rocks, fine sand, a moss blend of willow moss, java moss, and Christmas moss, some driftwood pieces. This here is a patch of hydrocortile tripartita. I've never used it, but they do look beautiful. Kind of like little clover leaves. Working with a small and confined space meant I needed small plants like these. Here's some peperomia plants, another species of peperomia, ivy plant, and nerve plants. There you have it, all the materials we needed for this build. And now, 
let's get down to business. Let's begin. First, I added the gravel. I tried to do it carefully so the glass wouldn't break. I had to use my hands to guide the gravel in so I had better control. There. We now have a drainage layer. And I'll explain how this all works in a bit. Next, I added some activated carbon to ensure the water falling into the drainage layer will be free from toxic metals or other harmful chemicals that might threaten the life living inside the bottle terrarium. So the way this will work is water dripping down into the two layers will eventually upcycle upwards through capillary action and evaporate from the soil surface, condense on the glass wall, and then drip back into the soil, only to end up passing the carbon and into the gravel drainage layer again. That is how the water cycle in a bottle terrarium works. Now to add soil, we bring in the nucleus. Digging deep to get the most nutrient-rich cast from our worms. That's a good amount of earthworms there, too. Next, I added cocoa fiber, which is nice and fluffy and water-absorbent. It will provide good aeration to the roots of the plants to be added later. I also added organic potting soil, spreading it down and mixing it in with the other soil types here. Notice that I am adding some dimension to this by building low in the front and high in the back. It will make for a great viewing later. I have to admit though, the narrow mouth of this bottle was already starting to be difficult to work with. I would soon realize that the more I added things into the bottle, the harder it would become. Just watch. All right, now it's time to add the plants. First, I will be adding the Peperomia plant because they're the biggest and will be the feature plant. Ah. And here, ladies and gentlemen, was when I realized how hard it was to manage these small plants inside the bottle with just my fingers. Okay, let me try to use my tweezers. Here's another one. Oh, man. How does Serpa Design do this? It's really difficult. Here's another Peperomia variety. Now I add some ivy, just to frame the entire thing from the sides. Here's one more to the other side. Also some vein plants. Now it's time to add the rocks. I like to use rocks strategically as anchors of newly planted plants. And I definitely would be needing them here. Some contortion is needed, I must say. I'll also be adding the Hydrocortile tripartita now. And mixed moss. Now I envisioned creating a cool pathway running up the hill and into the distance. So I wanted to construct my pathway using some coarse light colored sand. But so it wouldn't spill everywhere, I decided I'd use this vacuum nozzle as a funnel. <laughs> Improvisation. There you go. It actually worked. To clean up the area, I used a simple paintbrush. I've seen Serpa Design use a variety of different brushes in his videos, so I'm gonna do the same. Now adding fine sand to give the pathway a smooth finish. The sand was wet, so I had to scoop it up and place it in like this. I decided I would use tweezers for this, and it was honestly like picking up rice with chopsticks. It was so hard. Patting down the sand areas once more. There we go. Brushing it off again. Isn't it really starting to come together, guys? It's looking pretty cool so far, don't you think? But wait until we add the ants in in a bit. I also added some decorative rocks. Man, talk about a time-consuming process. One thing's for sure, I realized through all of this that small terrariums do not necessarily mean less work and effort, especially with a bottle terrarium. This project would have normally taken me 20 to 30 minutes to build, had it been a normal rectangular terrarium. By now, I was already clocking in at over two hours. Adding some driftwood, more moss to fill up space. Gotta give it a little water. And after almost three hours of work, here was the final product of the terrarium challenge. AC family, behold, our new bottle terrarium. So what do you guys think? Serpa design? Did I do an okay job? 
I can safely say this was easily the most challenging terrarium build I've ever done, considering its size. Alright, but this isn't done yet. This won't be an AC terrarium without some tenants. Or should I say, ten ants? <coughs> okay, corny joke. So I decided the ants that would move into this bottle terrarium would have to be ants that were a bit larger, and were of the kind that can't climb glass, for simplicity purposes. Seeing as I also didn't want to have to add a barrier of baby powder or Vaseline to the opening, which would be rendered ineffective once condensation built up anyway. And so, I decided I'd move in a hardy colony of trap jaw ants. Let's move them in. Now the problem was, the ant colony had some soil, so I needed to add them in without wrecking the setup. For that, I decided to use this plastic tube I had laying around as a chute to lead the ants inside. And here they are. In they go. And now I just need to wait for them to dig a burrow downwards and discover their new home on their own. The ants have nowhere else to go but down, seeing as they can't climb the smooth sides of the tube. A few minutes later, the trap jaw ants were in, wandering their newly built terrarium. Have a look at them, guys. They look just awesome in there. They scoured the lands, climbed the plants and rocks, and started to dig their nest. Also as a cover, I have to add this wooden ball here to seal everything up. This also ensures nothing from the outside makes their way into this terrestrial ant garden paradise we've created. And now, for something special regarding this ant terrarium in a bottle. There's a final detail to this challenge that I will share with you now. The trap jaw ants looked amazing in their bottle terrarium and completely fit in. I couldn't stop staring at them going about their various daily activities. As a housewarming gift, I left them this superworm here, which they were now happily devouring. What I quickly loved about this terrarium was it was small and portable, and due to its round shape, allowed me 360 degree viewing. I could turn it around any way I wanted to watch the ants from all angles. I also gave them some sweet jelly. Just look at how their powerful mandibles cut through it. It's so therapeutic watching them, wouldn't you say? And now for some good news to announce regarding this ant terrarium in a bottle. Serpa Design and I agreed that our creations for this terrarium making challenge would be put up for auction to any of you guys watching with 100% proceeds going towards a charity of our choice. In this spirit of giving, we wanted our terrarium making challenge to be for charity. So this is how it will work. If you would like to become the new owner of this ant terrarium in a bottle, email me with your donation amount at info at antscanada.com and the highest bidder between now and Christmas can either pick this terrarium up as I can't possibly ship this in the mail or if you're from another country you could still be the owner of this terrarium I just take care of it for you film it for the channel if you like and it can become a part of our ant room as the new owner, you could also name the colony and the terrarium, like Deborah's Bottle Ant Garden, or the John Jaws, or whatever you might like. When you send your bid to my email, please indicate your location. So, Serpa Design decided that all the proceeds from this ant terrarium in a bottle we made together here would go to the Aquascape Foundation. Their mission is to create sustainable solutions for the worldwide water crisis and promote awareness of water as our most precious resource through environmental, educational, and philanthropic efforts. You can check out the charity at aquascapefoundation.org. A great cause. And so there you have it. I was super in love with this ant terrarium in a bottle. And the fact that it was so hard to make made watching it afterwards so much more satisfying. It also gave me a whole newfound respect to the amazing work Tanner from Serpa Design does. Again, be sure to check out his channel for great terrarium, paludarium, and vivarium ideas, as well as my ultimate terrarium building challenge for him. 
I was super grateful for this learning experience and happy we could use our powers for some good. If you guys were to name this terrarium, what would you guys name it? Let me know in the comments section and hope you guys can participate and help out a great cause by sending in a bid. I'm hoping to create more of these bottle ant terrariums in the future. As I've discovered, it is a very unique, fun, and portable way to house ants too. Do you guys think we should do this again? Perhaps with a smaller bottle opening? <laughs> Thank you AC family for watching, happy holidays, and I'll see you again soon for another nature filled video. It's Ant Love forever. Alright guys, a lot is coming up ahead going into Antiverse 2020. And we've been uploading two videos a week this month. So if you enjoyed this video, do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications now and choose all so you get notified every time we release these high quality nature videos. Also, please remember to hit the like button every single time, including now. Just a reminder, I wanted to let everyone know that AntCanada.com is having its big annual holidays promo, the 2020 sale. That's 20% off all hybrid series ant farms and gear packs from now until January 2020, plus a free copy of our newly updated Ultimate Ant Keeping Handbook, right now at AntCanada.com. Click the link in the description to get your AC ant farm today. AC Inner Colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here. If you would like to watch extended play footage of the Trapjaw Ants living in their new bottle terrarium, all to the sounds of some relaxing Christmas music. It's super calming and therapeutic. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, why was I okay to handle this tarantula? Congratulations to Darren Bagley, who correctly answered, it was a calm species of tarantula. Congratulations to our winner, you just won a free ultimate ant keeping handbook from our shop. In this week's AC question of the week, we ask, what is your favorite thing in the ant terrarium in a bottle we made? Leave your answer in the comment section and you could also win a free ebook handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Wednesday and Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love forever.